I anticipate a wave of lawsuits at the end of this. For a lot of Canadians, this is the new look office, but most of us have never done something like this before. And there are a lot of questions about what workers' rights are during these difficult times. For the most part, the laws are clear. If you've been in a risky environment, you're dealing with someone who has the virus or been in one of the high-risk countries, they can say you are not to come in here. You're sub-quarantined for 14 days, and they have to pay you for those 14 days. Then there are the jobs that can't be done from home, like an office manager, auto mechanic, or server. Legally, they would have to pay you what you would have made if you had been there. So in other words, they have to pay you an amount that represents your tips as well. The catch to all of this is that it's contingent on your company asking you to self-isolate. If your employer tells you to stay home because they're concerned about whether you might be subject to the coronavirus, they have to pay you. But let's assume you actually get sick from the coronavirus and you stay home because you're actually ill. They don't have to pay you unless they have a disability or sick leave plan. But what if you contract the virus or even come back from a country that is high risk and are laid off because of it? You have a massive, not only a wrongful dismissal case, you have a human rights case because it's human rights protects disability, it's a disability, and it's even the perception of disability is a human rights violation. The employer thinks you might be sick and then fires you as a result of you taking time off as a result of that or you think you're sick. That's a human rights case, not just a wrongful dismissal case. For companies that don't take this seriously and leave employees exposed to sick co-workers or anyone from the public who may come to the office, Levitt says prepare to be sued. In Calgary, Jonathan Muma, City News.